This is Chris Morrow behind the camera with Kevin Smith at Comic Con. It's Friday the 13th. It is actually. I, I didn't know that. I for some reason I thought it was the 17th. And then the, this morning, uh, my wife said something about like, "Oh, be careful." And I was like, "Why?" Because it's Comic Con, you know, because it's Friday the 13th. Oh, oh Lord! And suddenly I heard. Ki, 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 ha, ha, ha. I'm that generation. When you hear Friday the 13th. You think of that Camp Crystal Lake. And then the first thing you think, if you're a true Friday the 13th person, is the woman, his mom. Nobody ever gives her credit, man. Everyone always forgets. It wasn't always Jason. It wasn't always the dude in the hockey mask. First movie, his mom is the killer. That terrified us at all. When we were kids, man, that was terrifying enough. Some old lady was a killer. And then years later, kids needed something more to put a hockey mask on Jason. He becomes a Friday the 13th everybody knows. Um, I'm sure my parents think of it more of just like, oh, it's an unlucky day, but I'll forever think about Camp Crystal Lake, Kevin Bacon getting killed. Would you ever stay in a room 13 or go yes. 13? Yeah, hell yeah. It's, I have no issues with the number 13. That stuff doesn't bother me at all. I could eat 13 pounds of candy. And have you? Yes, times three. <laughs> as long as you take it, as long as you make it multiples of three, everything's safe. So what's your must-see at Comic-Con this year? Um, at Comic-Con this year, I'll be honest with you, uh, for me, I want to see the Walking Dead uh, panel every year. That's kind of illuminating. Um, I, I'm a fan of that. I, I'm, I look forward to, Lord, what else do I want to see? I mean, I thought there would be some Dark Knight, but they're not bringing any Dark Knight here. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I guess they don't have to because at the end of the day, it comes out next week and it sells itself. What but, about the cars out front? Uh, well, I'm going to do a podcast there on the stage with them. Um, I'm doing an episode of our Fat Man on Batman podcast. I'm interview Bruce Tim right there next to the Batmobiles. So that's definitely fun. I look forward to seeing them, uh, seeing them but I, I'm going to see them whether I want to or not. They're going to be right behind them. In fact, the whole time Bruce Tim would be talking to me, I'm looking past him and be like, that's the tumbler. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot on the list that I'm, I'm, I'm more, when I go to con, it's more in work mode. I don't get to en enjoy this con as a fan as much as I go out there and actually like do panels and stuff. Like today, I got the Fat Man on Batman. Tomorrow, I've got an epics panel where I get to sit down with uh, Bill Shatner and Roger Corman. That's kind of thrilling for me. Then I've got my Hall H Q and A on Saturday night. That always closes out the uh, Hall H, and it also kicks off my calendar year. And then I do Babylon, Hollywood Babylon, our podcast over at the House of Blues. And then on Sunday morning, I'm moderating the DC Nation panel. So it's more about work for me. It's more about, like, you have to be here, here, and, and make sure you're wearing clothes. So I don't really get to enjoy it. Last time I went out on the floor, I think was during Watchmen. It was before Watchmen came out. It was the summer before Watchmen came out in February. So it was that Comic Con right before. And they had Archimedes, the Archie, uh, the Night Owl's ship. And it was the life size one from the movie. And it was on the floor. And I wanted to go see that. And I actually asked the comm people, I was like, I never do this, man, but can I get, like, can I get, is there any secret way you can get me as close to this thing as possible? I just want to see what it looks like in person. So they got me onto the floor and whatnot. And then they were like, you want to go on? I was like, no, I'm afraid they'll tell me I'm too fat to fly. So I just looked at it from a distance. It was awesome. Do you, move, do you miss your view askew booth? You know, not so much. Like, we were just talking about it driving down because I saw a tweet where somebody was like, does Smodco have a booth? And, you know, f honestly, it's kind of, for me and for what we do, a waste of time and money to have the booth because you can't go down there. Like, whenever we're at the booth, the, crowd builds around it and then they ask us to come upstairs to the signing area so at that point what's the booth really for like if we ever really want to go down to the floor we head down to uh, Bob Chapman's booth graffiti designs he sells all the t-shirts everyone knows him at comic-con because he has all the amazing t-shirt all the best t-shirt selection so we tend to team up with him and work off of his booth but then that gets crowded so I don't I don't I don't really miss having the view Cube booth you know it was I like, I, I love doing panels, I love getting up, doing the q and A. I I love just walking around because people go, hey, Gab, like everyone calls your name and stuff like that, they know you and, and that's comfort, you know, that's nice. You know how familiar with you they have to be to call you by your first name and not, hey, asshole, I get a few of those too. There he goes, fat piece of shit, you know, oh, hello, I, th I hope they're talking to me. And what are your fans asking you this time? Um, what are they asking? A lot of them have asked about the game. We had some games come out, um, some app games, one for iPhone, one for the iPad. This Jay and Silent Bob and Too Fat to Fly, and one is Jay and Silent Bob Let Us Dance, two like fun games. So people have been asking us about the games because we didn't tell anybody about them. We just kind of sprung it on them the other day. 
They're like, where'd that come from? How long? Blah, blah, blah. So I've been asking a lot of, answering a lot of questions about that. Some people have asked about comic book men because comic book men begins, uh, they sh started shooting last week and we come back in, in the, the fall. And I think a lot of people ask about that because they're like, really? You've got a season two? I said, yes, that shit's funny. Fuck you. Um, so we got, I got a few questions about that. A lot of people ask about spoilers as well, which is the movie review show we just started on Hulu. Because on the re recent episode we just had, we had uh, Stan Lee. Right, so a lot of people, of totally. So a lot of people, and Stan Lee, like, is, this is, the, this is the thing. You don't see Stan Lee on enough talk shows. Stan Lee is fantastic. You know, put a microphone on him or camera in front of him. He's sharper than most cats, and he's 89 years old. So he's gold, man. He just has gold to give you. So we were like, put him in the throne. You know, we got a big chair that we interview people on. We put him in the throne. He looks so at home. And he just talked about the Silver Age. He talked about the Marvel method of writing comics. This is a man who, like, casually name drops Steve Ditko, you know. And he knows him. He knew him. Uh, it, it's, it's when you get to share Stan Lee with people, people still thank you for it. Like, I still get people thanking me for Mallrats. Like, you put Stan Lee in Mallrats. It gives you this level of credibility and cool. And that we had him in spoilers, we got even more. So hopefully we can get him in comic book men this year as well. I'm actually going to be at spoilers for a Total Recall. Who's going to be there? Um, who's going to be the guest on spoilers? Do you, do you know our guest? We haven't confirmed the guest. We actually let Google announce that. There's like a process. But I'll tell you this. Len is coming, the director, but he's not going to be on that show. That, you know, that'd be weird to actually have the director of the show, but he's, Len Wiseman, one of the most attractive human beings on the planet. I don't know if you ever looked at him. He's, you know, he's with Kate Beckinsale. He's prettier than Kate Beckinsale. And he's funny. He's a really interesting dude. I was, you know, he shot uh, Live Free or Die Hard, and I was in that movie. And he tells great stories and stuff. And so you never see him on a talk show someplace. So I was like, dude, come sit on a chair. Come sit in the chair. So his movie comes out. I think it's not, our, it was going to be our last episode. We have one more after that is The Born, The Born, uh, Legacy. What is it? What's the newborn movie called? Born Legacy. Baby Born, Reborn, Born Again, whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> That's funny. That one is our last one. The week before that is, is going to be um, a Total Recall. So I think, um, I don't think Len will be on the Total Recall show. I think it'll be after probably. So let me ask you a quick comic book question. Friday the 13th, is there a comic book out there that you think really talks about it and kind of has that whole... Friday the 13th genre in there. If, if I, I, none comes to mind, but I guarantee you, somebody, if anybody's written knowledgeably on the subject and w woven it into a comic book tale of some sort, it's either Neil Gaiman or uh, Alan Moore or Grant Morrison. Probably Grant Morrison, because things that have to do with weird, supernatural, the outside the box, he usually likes to get in there and write about. So I guarantee you there must be some, look in that Doom Patrol run, there must be something about Friday the 13th that Grant Morrison wrote years ago. And do you think that Free Comic Book Day is really bringing back the comics to the kids? Uh, it depends who you ask. Now you ask me, I'll say, oh, of course. But you ask Walter Flanagan, who is our, the guy you know from Comic Book Men, and he also runs the stash, like in real life, that's his job. He hates it. He hates New Comic Book Day. He's just like, why do we have to buy comics to give away? It makes no sense. What kind of business is this? Do you hear of any other business? Is there a free Nike day? So it drives him nuts as a retailer. And I'm always like, dude, it brings more people into the store. He's like, they just come in and get the free books and leave. We never see them again. So I know there's a contingency of retailers out there who feel the same way as Walter. But at the end of the day, you gotta, sometimes you got to go for the lost leader. Sometimes, you know, you're putting a comic book into the hand of a kid who walks in that store, and yeah, maybe he don't come back next week, or the week after, or till he's fucking 10 or 12 or 15, and he's making his own decisions, spending his own money, and this is where he's going to spend it. You know, you got to breed the next generation of fans. So you need to give away sometimes, man, books particularly to kids. Like, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking when you got 40-year-old dudes coming in being like, I want my free comics, please. You know, like, dude, you could buy these. But um, kids, when kids come through the door, you want to ply them with the books because without them being interested in them in the future, you know, now you're competing for a kid's attention. Why would they read a comic book when they can watch Thor fight the Hulk and, and you know, Iron Man in the same movie and stuff? They don't even have to read. They can watch it play out for them. The idea of reading would seem 
archaic, I guess, at this point. But at least that's some place you could point them between movies. Like, well, until you're waiting for another Avengers sequel, there are 500, 1,000 different comic books on the subject that you can read right now. And you got to start that in the young, man. Like, I was a young comic book fan, and now I'm an old comic book fan. Um, you got to breed them young so that when they grow up, they still have that same sense of wonder and fascination for the milieu that we all love so much. You know, San Diego's building a huge library downtown. Do you think that um, libraries should have comic books? Oh, by this point, yeah, it's a kind of a shame, and most do. Um, most, I remember when I was a kid, they would tend to put graphic novels and stuff in the humor section. So, you know, there would be an Irma Bombeck book, and here would be a Superman treasury right next to it. Now, I believe, I haven't been in a library in a while, I'll be honest with you, um, but I believe they do have, I've seen some people tweeting about, like, I picked up your Green Arrow. I know for a fact that my Green Arrow quiver hardcover wound up as like it won some sort of young people's library award which I was so proud of as years ago but I remember first being like libraries still exist and then I was like and they have the comic book sections in them graphic novel sections I guess they tend to put them into young adult but again that's an old categorization now in a post Avengers world or what we'll see in a few minutes will probably be a post Dark Knight Rises world as well there's a lot more understanding, respect, acknowledgement for comic books, graphic novels, so maybe they do have their own section at this point without being put into humor, young adult, always diminishes. These have drawings, so clearly they're not important. And meanwhile, I, I defy you to show me any book as interesting as The Watchmen, even that Fifty Shades of Grey book. I don't care how much S&M you show me, The Watchmen's still better. Thanks for your time. Thank you.